so we have this line in the sand, a literal line in the sand, where you have Yellowstone National Park on one side, where bison are respected and admired as a native wildlife species. I mean, iconic. People come from around the world to come celebrate this animal. Step right across that line and you enter Montana, where they're pretty much treated as vermin. And the Montana Department of Livestock has a vested interest in protecting the economic interests of the livestock industry and cattle. So they manage these bison as if they were a nuisance animal. And Montana has uh, zero tolerance for them in the state. So uh, when they migrate out of the park, they are either shot, hazed, which is chased with helicopters and ATVs and snowmobiles back into the park or they're rounded up in big capture facilities, they call them, and uh, loaded onto livestock trailers and shipped to slaughterhouses. Unspeakable things that, that now happen to wildlife in the name of brucellosis. So brucellosis is a bacterial infection caused by a bacteria that's called brucella bordes. Every year bison are migrating out of the park during winter trying to get to areas with lower snow so that they can find forage. But as they exit the park, then they come into areas where cattle are held. And because of brucellosis, which bison have that they could pass to cattle, this is now a zone of conflict where we don't want them directly contacting cattle and passing the disease to cattle. The Yellowstone National Park bison pose a tremendous threat to our livelihoods. And the reason is because they're so infected with brucellosis and it only takes one. When you get brucellosis into your herd, you usually find it through a testing situation. Uh, a lot of times it ends up at a livestock market. And if you ended up with a positive animal and it's a quarantine protocol, it takes three clean tests in a row to get out of quarantine, and those are spaced a month or more apart. So the duration of quarantine is long, and that's a really long time to keep your animals confined, and it's a really long time to feed hay that's really expensive. That type of quarantine confinement has the potential to put you out of business. If the interagency bison management plan was not in place, we would not be here. I couldn't be part of what happens up at Stevens Creek when they have to test and slaughter those bison. I couldn't do that, but it's necessary. Buffalo Field Campaign is a grassroots conservation organization that's dedicated to protecting the Yellowstone bison and their migration into Montana. During the winter months when the bison migrate from Yellowstone, we go out on cross-country skis or snowshoes and we monitor the migration into the state. We're keeping tabs on, on where they are and how they're doing and again documenting all actions made against them by state and federal agencies. Our primary goal is to allow the bison that access to winter habitat and let them, you know, let them be on the lands they need to be to survive. Yellowstone is the only place where they are genetically um, unique and genetically pure. They, do, they don't have cattle genes. That Yellowstone population is the only living link to those great herds of millions that once thundered across the plains. They've always been there. There's a thread connecting them back to those days. Every year, thousands of elk are allowed to migrate from Yellowstone. Um, elk have been implicated in transmissions to cattle, whereas bison have never, and yet the ranching um, industry still won't let those bison go to eastern Montana. So I think that that's really telling how it's not really about brucellosis, but it's more about some deep-seated fear of wildness, of, of wild buffalo. These people have an ideal in their mind about what they would like to see. But they're fighting for that ideal, and we're fighting for our livelihood. And that is a huge difference. I mean, we've, we've worked really, really hard on this place, and hearts and soul, and we would like to be able to hand it down to the next generation. But in the last six years, it's really taken a different picture for me, in that I don't know that we can do that anymore. 
because it doesn't seem fair to hand down all of the problems that are associated with trying to be a rancher. You know, you have no control. So there's a lot of things that you just have to learn to flow with. But diseased wildlife can't be one of them, nor can Yellowstone National Park bison, because it's so hard anyway. And then you put this on top of it, and it becomes almost unbearable. It's not either wild bison or human economies or, he or livestock. We're smart enough as a species to get this right, and it doesn't have to be one or the other. Science can help us do that, and um, just open dialogue and communication. So one of our central questions is, how often are bison and elk transmitting brucellosis back and forth? And that's relevant for, if, if there's a control program that does control the disease in bison, how quickly are they likely to get it again from elk? Since we may not be able to control what's happening in elk, but we might be able to control some things in bison. But if it's gonna spill back again eventually, is that worth it? 